This is Twit. They're I'm teaching AI to smell. So, okay, then. I don't know why I find that fascinating. It's not a news story. It's a paper. But they're figuring out how to associate certain molecules with smell so that AI can smell. Wow. An odor map of human olfactory perception brought to AI. I don't know if I ever want to see or smell an odor map. That doesn't Well, I wonder if it makes really smells. I think that has a place for for medical reasons down the oh, road sure. that could potentially help some stuff out. So yeah, I, yeah. I, I'm down for this. Actually, my first thought was, oh, the AI doesn't have COVID then. But actually, that, <laughs> I suppose Anne's point is that that could have applications for people who are stuck with losing their olfactory sense. Right. But then the other thought that I had was, um, it's actually creepy, but I don't think for the obvious way. And I was uh -huh. thinking about it in terms of how to the extent that AI truly approximates human intelligence, which I don't think we're anywhere near, nah. but in theory, we're trying to get there. Um, that actually seems key and a really important thing to get right yep. in order to unlock that where you actually can start to truly mimic human intelligence because of the connection of how humans respond to smell and memory. Yeah, that man, if you're you going to build a new right human. Out of my brain, Kathy, it's mm. like, it's like we're on the same <laughs> wavelength. That was exactly what I was thinking. I was like, there's gotta be a connection between this and memory. Yeah. And I, yeah, you nailed it. That's awesome. Yeah. And I think that's the thing, like if you're going to, I mean, I think we lose the sight with the AI discussions that, you know, in theory, we're talking about building commander data, but in the meantime, we're nowhere near commander data. We're just, you know, fancy software. And and I don't think we quite understand that there's this gap. But if you're shooting for a commander data, and it's interesting because I don't think the show actually ever dealt with him smelling things, but I, maybe I'm forgetting something. But I think if you're going to try to build something which could be sentient or so close to human that you can really approximate sentience in, in a way which is credible, um, that does seem like one of the key things you might need to get right along the way. Apparently, uh, in the next generation, Angel One data is perfectly capable of smelling and accurately mm. distinguishing a variety of smells. Just uh, I, I appreciate that that fact was so readily available to us. <laughs> <laughs> it's you all it up and I, I, I actually feel rather embarrassed that I did not remember that myself. Um, <laughs> I, I, I am ashamed. I shall go watch some reruns post haste. <laughs> that one episode. I'm thinking that yeah. the that the uh, the robot dogs will now be able to sniff. Oh, mm -hmm. be super super accurate. Yeah, I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. A robot, robot dog bomb sniffing dog. You know? <coughs> right. I'm totally fine with that. And I listened to a podcast called Huberman Labs with um, uh, Mr. Andrew Huberman. I believe he's at Stanford. And a couple episodes back, he spoke about this with far as uh, memory and, and our olfactory Ooh. senses and stuff. And it was really, really good discussion. And, mm. and I could see AI tying into this and, could are, be beneficial for some. Are we getting ahead of ourselves? Because the way you were talking about, okay, a bomb sniffing dog. Okay, that makes sense. But yeah. we have machines capable of detecting aromatic model molecules. We have smoke detectors. Mm -hmm. So in theory, mm -hmm. like what is different about what they're shooting for as opposed to what we currently have now? And that's a question I would is throw out. Is that aromatic for, or, or? Well, Ultimately, there's a molecule and you're detecting yes. the molecule. So True. how are we detecting the molecule? Is it something where we have to process it in a way that is a smell like humans determine whether mm -hmm. the molecule is there because of our sense of smell or how we understand it? But mm -hmm. is that even important in terms of what the actual purpose is? You just want to detect right. the molecule. Right. So um, yeah. however, the molecule yeah. is getting d developed. But I think it's a bigger thing for the AI conversation of we keep talking about this magic we haven't had before that's totally unprecedented. But it's do. not as unprecedented and nobody's being clear about what is new about this, if anything, as opposed to what we already had before. And I think it just absolutely skews the conversation about whether it's good, bad or otherwise, or whether, you know, whether it creates true problems or is not as useful. There's a gold rush mentality and like, oh, this is all fancy and new. Oh, yeah, and true. and true. I don't think that serves us because I think it both sell snake oil and I think it also masks benefits and it masks 
problems um, mm-hmm. because I don't, it's just not a clear headed look at what the new advance actually is. So we can contend with whether that's what the externalities of that advance is. Cause at the moment, I mean, what we've just described isn't really necessarily an advance. So somebody needs to explain what is different and fancy and then we can go evaluate whether we All right, it's my fault. I put it in the rundown. Maybe it's a nothing burger. I don't know. All right. No, I mean, it's what not a nothing burger. What does a nothing burger, burger no. smell like? No, if no, it's, it's not a nothing burger. And a burger that... doesn't have a smell. <laughs> no, but it's not nothing that you did. My objection is not that we talked about it. My objection is that other people have put it in the public discourse as if this is, like, meaningful. And I think it's worth scrutinizing what is the actual meaning here. Amen. And, like, you know, even we kind of got, like, ooh, fancy. Let's think, of, you know, in a very sci-fi way of what yeah. the implications are right. and i mean that's not necessarily bad and inappropriate and um you know we're doing a show so why not but um it was kind of interesting to take a step back and say hang on a second yeah let's look at this a little more closely and i think the thing that the ai discourse needs more of in general is the hang on look at let's step back and look at this more closely yes. and figure yes. out if there's even a there there well, yeah, what that reminds me of on, the, on like the the visual um arts side of things is Photoshop has existed for a very long time. It has allowed Mm -hmm. people to do things with, with photos that at one point they may have felt, you know, has been copying or, Oh, you're, that's a step too far. Now that Photoshop has AI, you know, capabilities, people are upset about it again, or artists are upset that it easily, you know, can, can duplicate their, their style or whatever. Um, and, and just kind of sometimes the, Sometimes it's like because it's the new thing and it's the new technology, we are angry. But why why is the anger there? Is it actually the technology or or is it something else? Because Photoshop has always been doing things that really kind of pressed, you know, pressed up against the lines of of what anyone thought was possible before. And that's just what's happening now. But why is it different? That's my point about the marketing. The same yeah. reason that 5G blew up. Everyone was trying to say, ooh, you're going to want 5G. You're going to yeah. want 5G. And then everyone like pattern matched and is like, hang on, we're going to hate 5G. And the branding blew up. But I think the same thing is happening with AI, where everyone's talking about, hey, look, our, our Photoshop software got more sophisticated. We can do things with less computer power or produce quicker results, whatever. Um, but we're not talking about like, oh, our, our software is just better. Yeah, our software is now improved. new and fancier and yeah. different and it's using this fancy thing. And everyone's like, oh my gosh, and this fancy thing, it's actually scaring me. So now we've all got pitchforks and torches going after the fancy thing. Yeah. When the fancy thing was really just branding because nobody's really distilling what the difference is. And the extra shame of it is there actually are cool things where what are the advances we are making that bring us more to a commander data world. And we they're all like, drowned out by just marketing crap where mm-hmm. we made our software better. Well, okay, you could talk about that. How is your software better? But we're not having a realistic conversation about how the software is better. We're talking about something that's close to a marketable form of magic. Mm-hmm. And this is not useful. Yeah. You confused me. I kept on thinking you were saying, I'm not enough of a sci-fi fan. I thought you were saying command or data. I thought this no. is some doctrine, some legal doctrine I've never heard of. No, I'm not entirely data. sure why I, I referred to him by his title and not data. Or yeah. I was just afraid of like, I could have said Mr. Data. Well, I don't trying to be respectful here. I, I know. know I was really sort data of like Esquire. respecting the office of, of Commander Data. I don't you know. I'm, I'm not quite sure what that says. I was confused. <laughs> Hey, I know you're super busy, so I won't keep you long, but I wanted to tell you about a show here on the Twit Network called Tech News Weekly. You are a busy person, and uh, during your week, you may want to learn about all the tech news that's fit to, well, say, not print, here on Twit. It's Tech News Weekly. Uh, Me, Micah Sargent, my co-host, Jason Howell. We talk to and about the people making and breaking the tech news, and we love the opportunity to get to share those stories with you and let the people who wrote them or broke them share them as well. So I hope you check it out every Thursday right here on Twit.